On May 2, 2011, US President Barack Obama announced important news to the world. Tonight, I can report to the American people and to the world that the United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. The Al-Qaeda leader was shot dead in a raid by US Special Forces on a compound about 60 kilometers north of Pakistan's capital, Islamabad. The death of bin Laden ends a 10-year manhunt for the world's most wanted man. Assalamu ala man huda. Ayuh shaab al -Amriki. Before his death, the last known sighting of bin Laden by anyone other than his very close entourage was in late 2001 as he prepared to flee his stronghold in Afghanistan. However, in subsequent years, he issued several video and audio messages. How did bin Laden develop his political agenda? From when he first arrived in the Pakistani frontier town of Peshawar in 1981, the town at the entrance to the Khyber Pass, and the road to Afghanistan. And how did this Saudi-born son of a rich construction magnate who joined guerrilla forces in Afghanistan fighting the Soviet Union emerge to become one of the most feared men in the world? This is the story of bin Laden through the eyes of people who met him. Sheikh Osama bin Laden عامل الشباب أكثر من أبل يعني تخيل درت بعض الحين مثلا لو مرض فينا واحد مرض حمى حمى بسيطة يبقى الشيخ أسامة بلادي فوق رأسك حتى تفك الحمى. He was very conscious of his appearance. He would touch his kufiyah and his robe. يعني هذا الوعي يعني بلي كوت كي كي إسمت كرو. I'm a pretty only of some of them. You can name me Mahmanuka Kram Kutkarta Humber of Faraz Banta. Yes, Tame Lake be be Adab Shadid, Wala Yukatak Alal Etlak, Soto Hafid Jidan, Yani, Lace Minish Chaksaladi, Yusar Matanahno Arab Marufun, Yani, Be no Daim and Noeli Sautna, Hatan was still Kalimatna, Hula, can Allah act that a few Mutahal Adab. When he looked me in the eyes and he was answering my questions, he had the tone and manner of an old uncle trying to tell you a story that would be a good example. Moving from Khartoum to Afghanistan somehow changed his role or changed his uh, strategy. Uh, he was uh, trying to uh, present uh, political arguments which were correct, but he was, uh, I think, uh, not able to prove it from Quran or Sunnah. Over the years, Al Jazeera's bureau chief in Islamabad, Ahmed Zedan, has met numerous people. People able to debunk some of the myths and describe some of the characteristics of the man who was Osama bin Laden. A man denounced by his enemies as a religious fanatic and a terrorist, and praised by supporters as a leader fighting Western aggression and subservient Arab regimes. Top Pakistani surgeon Amir Aziz. He was willing to speak about his meeting with Osama bin Laden. In 2002, the British trained orthopedic surgeon had been held for more than a month by FBI and Pakistani intelligence officers on suspicion of links to Al Qaeda. He was released after being cleared by investigators. From his clinic in Lahore, Aziz described his meeting with bin Laden in November 2001, shortly before the Taliban government was routed by US-led coalition forces. He said bin Laden had shown no sign of kidney failure, nor had he seen any evidence of dialysis. The last meeting I had with him was after 9-11. This was in Kabul, where I, have, I was treating patients and he had just come to say, see his injured and say hello. He was walking normally, he was eating normally, he was looking hale and hearty, and uh, 
I find it very hard to believe that such a healthy person could be on dialysis. I don't buy this at all. And during one of my visits to Kandhar, um, I was asked to see a patient in the rest house where I was put up by the Taliban. And it turned out to be Osama bin Laden, who I was told had fallen off his horse. On examination, I did not find anything seriously wrong with him. I did some manipulation of his back, taught him some exercises, and prescribed some medication. And that's about it. Uh, this was the total meeting. Then after that, I met him in Kandahar again, in, in a place where, which was near the airport. It was an old building, uh, all, uh, a camp like with multiple small buildings. And there was a big lunch in a big hall. Having failed to capture bin Laden in 2001, many Americans placed faith in reports that bin Laden was near to dying of kidney disease. If he did have renal problems, they were certainly not serious enough to kill him. Abdel Bari Atwan was one of only few Arab journalists to meet bin Laden. During the many hours he spent with the Al-Qaeda leader, he failed to see any evidence of kidney problems. يعني أنا كنت أستغرب دائما القول بأنه الشيخ أسامة بن لادن مصاب بمرض الكلى وفشل كلوي وما شابه ذلك يعني أنا أعرف أنه أنا لست طبيبا لكن الأشخاص اللي مصابوا بالفشل الكلوي يحتاجوا إلى غسيل كلى يعني على الأقل مرتين في الأسبوع طب أنا ما كانت ثلاثة أيام يعني وكان هو في صحة جيدة ولم تبدو عليه أي عراض الإعياء أو المرض على الإطلاق مضافا لذلك أنا أعرف اللي بصابوا بفشل كلوي مثلا بيكون ربما نتيجة الإصابة مرض السكر يعني أسامة بن لادن أو الشيخ أسامة بن لادن كان يشرب الشاي مثل القطر مثل العسل يعني طب واحد عنده مثلا مرض سكري يعني يشرب الشاي أنا حتى أن الشاي من كثر ما كنت حلو كنت أشربه على مضض مثل الدواء لأن نحن متعودين هنا في لندن أن قليل من السكر أو حتى نشرب الشاي بدون سكر فتفاجأت النقطة الأخرى اللي مصاب بفشل كلوي دائما يسير ومعه زجاجة ماء يعني ويشرب منها باستمرار أنا لم ألاحظ ذلك على الإطلاق بالعكس يعني مشيت أنا وياه أخذني في جولة سياحية في Bin Laden spent most of the first half of the 1980s as a fundraiser for the Mujahideen, the guerrillas fighting the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan. He helped run the so-called Services Bureau in Peshawar, raising funds and recruiting foreign Mujahideen. He worked as an aide to Abdullah Azam. Afghanistan <laughs> كان حقيقة أسامة بن لادن يعني رفيقا للوالد وكان يعني شهد إنشاء مكتب الخدمات مكتب خدمات المجاهدين الذي أنشأه الوالد الشيخ أسامة بن لادن يعني كان ينفق من ماله الخاص على كل حقيقة نشاطات مكتب الخدمات الشيخ عبد الله عزام هو رجل وأظهر Moving to Afghanistan, bin Laden's first taste of combat was at the Battle of Jaji in 1987, in which the Mujahideen outflanked a force of Russian tanks and special forces. The battle proved to be a great boost to the guerrillas. Bin Laden and his Arab fighters won fame at the battle. Though relatively small in number, these fighters fought side by side with the Afghan Mujahideen. 
graves of Arab fighters can still be found today in Afghanistan. سألني هل رأيت أسامة بن لادن قلت نعم وهو استغرب قال كيف أنت تكلم هذه الكلام قلت لماذا أنتم كنتم تساعدوننا بستينجر وهو كان يساعدوننا بجامع الأموال وحتى بمجيء الشباب Arab fighters participated in the Battle of Jalalabad in 1989 with the Mujahideen against Afghan government forces. Later in the same year, Abdullah Azam, bin Laden's mentor, was assassinated in a bomb attack on his car in Peshawar. قال لي أسامة شخصيا أنا نظرتي للشيخ عبد الله بأنه كان مظلل علينا خيم علينا كان اللافتة التي نتفيأ فيها كلنا فذهب الشيخ عبد الله رحمة الله عليه السجن فظهرت أنا لو كان موجود الشيخ عبد الله كان هو الذي يغطي علينا As I used to be the coordinator inside Afghanistan while moving from one end to another end I would come across the non afghan Mujahideen also and at times they used to have problems I used to sort out the problems in that I came to know that some wealthy Arab has come and he is helping Afghan Mujahideen in building roads and shelters. Thereafter again I had um, one or two meetings with him when uh, he was uh, asked to head the foreign Mujahideens because their leader or their coordinator was killed in Bishar, Abdullah Azam was killed and there was a vacuum of leadership and Osama bin Laden was available. Suspects in Azam's murder included the CIA, Mossad, even bin Laden himself. But those with him at the time deny his involvement. Well, I don't that Osama bin Laden بعد التفاهم والحوار والحديث الذي كان بينه وبين الشيخ عبد الله عزام انه يقع في مثل هذا الامر انما يعني السؤال هذا يستجلب سؤالا اخر لماذا قتل الشيخ جميل الرحمن وعلى شاب يد مصري نكره يعني الله يرحم الجميع انما لا احد يعرفه ليس لماذا قتل الشيخ جميل الرحمن الشيخ جميل الرحمن لم يكن في صورة عبد الله عزام ولم يكن واردا اجنبيا من الخارج ولم يكن لديه تبرعات كثيرة يقسمها بين الافغان انما هذه امراض الساحة يعني لا يمكن احد يصدق انه واحد بيغتال استاذه او بقتل استاذه ومربيه لا يمكن هذا واحنا مسكنا يعني ببعضهم في في بشاور في وقت الاغتيال في حادثة الاغتيال يعني جاءوا ليصوروا ما صنعوا جاءوا يصوروا حتى يكونوا يعني يعطوا الوثائق لمن أرسلهم فأمسكنا فيهم أخذنا الكاميرات منهم يعني الشباب الله يجزيهم الخير أمسكوا فيهم أخذوا الكاميرات منهم كانت واحدة منهم فرنسية وواحد باكستاني وقال هذا الباكستاني في بعض قال إنه يعني هي منظمة عالمية وقد تم اغتيال هذا الصحفي. With his mentor now dead, bin Laden became increasingly close to an older and more experienced Egyptian militant, a former doctor called Ayman al Zawahiri. كانت هذه حقيقة 1987 محطة ثانية انتقالية للشيخ أسامة. التأثير الملحوظ للفكر المتشدد 
في تنظيم القاعدة بدأ من التصاق المصريين الذين كانوا وراء فكرة تأسيس التنظيم المصريين كانوا هم وراء فكرة تأسيس التنظيم في سنة 1987 أقول تحديدا الأشخاص هذا ليس طبعا أي من الظواهر في ذلك الوقت بعيد تمام البعد عن الشيخ وسام بلادن غير موجود يعني غائب تماما أما أنا ما من أقصد بتأسيس التنظيم إنما هو أبو عبيدة رحمه الله الذي قتل أثناء عودته من كينيا إلى السودان في النهر لما انقلب في انقلب فيهم الزورق أبو عبيدة البنشيري كان يلقب هكذا نسبة لأنه أول جبهة زارها كانت جبهة بنشير عند أحمد شاه مسعود رحمهم الله فأبو عبيدة البنشيري أبو حفص المصري وسيف العاد هذه الشخصيات الثلاث البارزة. بن لادن was um, clearly the messenger. He was the the one who was cast as the leader, the one who was pushed up front to do the talking. But uh, looking back on that experience, and I've thought about it many times, uh, I spent more time with uh, Dr. Zawahiri than I did with Osama bin Laden. He wanted to know what type of questions would be asked. He wanted to know what areas would be covered. He wanted to know what program it would be on and for how long. He wanted to know what kind of shots we needed to go with the story. And clearly, he had a lot to do with formulating the message. I think if there is, um, if there is a mindset behind bin Laden that helps formulate his, his message and his approach to delivering that message, it's probably Zawahiri. In November 1988, Benazir Bhutto won elections in Pakistan and became the country's first female prime minister. The election was a blow to the Arabs in neighboring Afghanistan, who had lost an ally in Pakistan's previous ruler, General Zia al Haq. Bhutto's Pakistan began to look with concern at the Arab fighters next door particularly once Russian troops had fully withdrawn from Afghanistan by early 1989. Accusations continue to this day that bin Laden supported Pakistani politician Nawaz Sharif in a bid to topple the Bhutto government at that time. A former Pakistani intelligence official who knew bin Laden well told Al Jazeera that Sharif received financial support from bin Laden, among others. One thing I tell you, today Mr. Nawaz Sharif refuses that he ever met Osama or he ever got any support from Osama. This is bad. He was a person who would always ask me, where is my benefactor? I would like to salute him. It was sometime Osama's money, sometime money came from outside and the maximum money ultimately came from the governments. It came from government of Saudi Arabia, it came from government of UAE, it came from other governments also. الذي أنا أعرف شخصيا أنه حدث بسبب أن هناك كان صديق مشترك لبن لادن ونواز شريف وهو أحد الإخوة خالد خواجة الذي قد اشتغل في السابق في جهاز الاستخبارات الباكستاني. وهو طبعا كان من الداعمين للجهاد الافغاني ضد القوات السوفيتيه وايضا كان بالاتصال الوثيق مع بن لادن فحينما تعرض بعض المجاهدين العرب في بشاور بعض المضايقات من الاجهزه الباكستانيه في حكومه بن نزير الاولى فهو اقترح على بن لادن ان يدعم نواز شريف الذي كان زعيم المعارضة يعني في آنذاك لإسقاط حكومة بنزير بوتو. When General Zia was killed, the Pakistani security agencies started arresting them. That was the problem, and Sheikh Osama bin Laden wanted to resolve this problem. He wanted some help, and but he nobody was ready to help him. Some people contacted him and they said that actually this is Benazir Bhutto's government which is creating problems. And if you want uh, the solution of your problem, uh, so uh, a new government can solve your problem. So you must uh, support us. So Sheikh Osama bin Laden asked some Pakistani uh, religious scholars, some ulama to support Nawaz Sharif. And according to my information, 
نواز شریف آلسو میٹ ہم Bin Laden left Afghanistan and the escalating civil war there following the Soviet withdrawal. He later emerged in Sudan after slipping out of Saudi Arabia. In Khartoum, leading Islamist ideologue Hassan Turabi had recently taken power and was offering protection to a variety of Islamic militant groups. Bin Laden contributed generously to the country that had announced its adherence to Sharia law. Among other things, he farmed and built a road as a goodwill gesture. His work won him many admirers among the Sudanese people. بيحسن لهم احسان الواحد لما يستغرب فيه والله يضيع لك قروش انا قلت بجيبه بنوي اي مسكين يجي يديه والله مش مسكين تدي الخمسه ودي العشرة والله يفعل له 50 الف و20 و15 دي الطريقه انا شفتها عنده بس ده ما كل ما اعرفه عن الشيخ بلادي انا هاف ميت هيم اونلي تويس اند بوث تايمز ان السودان هي واز لوجد ان خرطوم باك ان 93 ديسمبر Osama was building roads there, he was involved in agricultural activities. He was trying to economically build up Sudan, uh, that is. And uh, he had uh, created certain structures also by way of infrastructure. We went up through the desert north of Khartoum towards this little tiny village where Bin Laden's men were building a, a new road which he had con- which he'd constructed joining the village to the main highway between <coughs> Khartoum and Port Sudan and they were children were dancing and, and old men were explaining to him how grateful they were and the village headman was thanking Bin Laden. There Bin Laden sat in his white robe and uh, his red kufiya had on and um, I saw Jamal go up to him and greet him and I saw Bin Laden looking over Jamal's shoulder at me. He'd obviously say I brought this Ajnab Ajnabi with me. And Bin Laden was very, I won't say he was shy, he was very nervous about meeting me. Um, he'd not met a Western reporter before. And he clearly believed that I was going to ask him about terrorism, 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 terrorism. And in fact, what I was really interested to know from him was what it was like fighting the Russians. While in Sudan, Bin Laden remained politically active. For most of the 1990s, he maintained an office in London, named the Advisory and Reformation Committee. The office was believed to have been involved in distributing literature critical of the Saudi regime. Following bomb attacks in Riyadh and Khobar in Saudi Arabia, Sudan started to come under increasing pressure to expel its controversial guest. Investigators believed Bin Laden was tied at some level to both attacks. Somalia was where Bin Laden chose to open up his first front against the United States. In 1992, the Marines were sent there on a relief mission. Bin Laden provided arms and expertise to the Somalis. Soon after, American helicopters were shot down and Marines attacked and killed in the streets of Mogadishu. The Americans withdrew. Another superpower humiliated. Another Bin Laden victory. The pressure on Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir to expel bin Laden intensified. 
as well as the Saudis and the Americans. The Egyptians added their voice. In 1995, an assassination attempt was made on Egyptian President Husni Mubarak in the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. Bin Laden and his Egyptian allies were suspected of being behind the attack. It was thought that Bin Laden used his farm in Sudan as a training camp for Egyptian militants opposed to Mubarak. Perhaps to counter this allegation, Bin Laden accepted an interview request from a Cairo-based American journalist, Scott McLeod. The interview took place at Bin Laden's farm in Sudan. Well, I met him two times altogether. Uh, it was part of the same interview, though. I went to Khartoum in Sudan in uh, February, early February of 1996, and it was during the holy month of Ramadan. And I met bin Laden at his office uh, in Khartoum. He had a construction company uh, called, I think, Al Hijra Construction Company. And I met him in his office as the manager's office in that building. Eventually, in 1996, Sudan succumbed to international pressure to expel bin Laden. In May of that year, bin Laden left. His land and investments in the country were appropriated by the government. فحتى لما عملت اللقاء مع الشيخ اسامه بن لادن انتقد الحكومه السودانيه وهاجمها بشده حقيقه يعني وتحدث بمراره عن انهم كيف خذلوه وكيف خذلوا انسان مسلم زيه وكيف انه وثق فيهم ويعني واعتقد انهم بقيموا دوله اسلاميه حقيقيه وفي الاخر يعني طعنوه في الظهر بن لادن still had friends in Afghanistan at the time, in 1996, the country was under the presidency of Burhanuddin Rabbani. Allies of the Afghan president recognized that bin Laden was in need of a new sanctuary. إسلامي لمول محمد يونس خالص كانوا على السلة بهم وفي إحدى الأسفار الذين وفت منهم سافروا إلى السودان في زيارة والتقوا هناك ببعض الأشخاص منهم أسامة بن لادن فديك مثلا فديك اغه شهیدان اونم اخلم در کسان شجوانده دی اغه اونم نه اخلم زکه چه ورته مشکل پیغ نشی پا دی که یو مجاهد سه بود چه ده حزب اسلامی یک متیار قماندان و ده انجینر محمود ده استاد سیاف قماندان و ده او بخی ده ده مولی سب خالص قماندان و ساز نور ده استاد سیاف قماندان و او زین نور کسان چه اغوی اوست جواندی دی ده کسان طول لارل سودان تا پا دی وقت که دست معلومی ده چه ده سودان دولت در زیاد دین که فشار لنده چه باید بسامه لخبال خاوری نو وشاری یا ده چه ده امریکان رو تسلیم کی نو دوی چه لارل حل تا او سامه سر ولی دل او سامه تو ده بلا نوار کرد چه تا سو راشه افغانستان تا Bin Laden and his Egyptian allies left Sudan and returned to Afghanistan. The pressure was lifted on Sudan. 
which had been at risk of international sanctions for sheltering those suspected of involvement in the assassination attempt on Mubarak. Mustafa Hamza was the main suspect in the plot to kill the Egyptian president. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Zedan met him in eastern Afghanistan in 1996. Hamza had fled there, the place where bin Laden and other members of the nascent Al-Qaeda group had taken refuge. The place which bin Laden called Khorasan, which is where, according to Muslim legend, an army will emerge to support Muslims in the Middle East. He came back. By that time, Jalalabad was liberated. He came to Jalalabad. And then he was the, again, guest of Professor Saif. But at that time, government was under Professor Burhanuddin Rabbani. And they had no objection. He remained over there. When Taliban entered Jalalabad, they found Osama bin Laden over there. And uh, as I was told, they asked him, you know, you are an honorable guest of Afghanistan. You want to go to Kabul, we will help you going over there and join your own friends. And if you want to stay over here, you can be our guest. Probably Osama bin Laden decided to stay over there. Settling in Afghanistan as a guest of the newly emergent Taliban, bin Laden gave another interview. The cameraman remembers being surprised at how he was received by bin Laden and his men. I read about, a lot about them that they are extremist or radical or fundamentalist type of people. But uh, when I entered the tent and uh, it was a Ramzan time and they offered me a uh, lunch. So, after that, I feel a sense of security that uh, they know me that I am Christian and uh, they are behaving well. So after, uh, after the interview, we uh, all uh, sat for iftari and we, eat, uh, we ate in, uh, you know, in, in one plate. The another uh, which he told me is that I am not against any religion, not any, you know, uh, caste. I am only uh, against the policies of America, which they are trying to uh, implement on this uh, world, or you know, Im implement these policies on Muslim world. <laughs> He said to me on our second meeting that he was not against Americans, he was against the US government. But of course you hear this from many people in the Middle East. I'm not against English people, only against Mr. Blair, whatever it may be. He never showed, nor did any of his armed men ever show any hostility towards me as a Westerner. In fact, bin Laden, to my appalled um, fascination, he, he mentioned me in a videotape he made just before the US presidential election. In Afghanistan's ongoing civil war, Arab fighters loyal to bin Laden lent their support to the Taliban. When I remember, in 1992, after the defeat of Najib, we sat in a house ونشرنا أعدنا نشر البيان الذي كان وضعه الشيخ عبد الله رحمة الله عليه أنه إذا وصل الأفغان إلى الحكم 
وفشلوا في إرساء دولة مستقرة واقتتلوا مع بعضهم فلا يجوز لكم أن تكونوا طرفا في القتال ضد مع طرف ضد ضد طرف آخر. كانت المعارك قد بدأت بين فصائل المجاهدين في أفغانستان وقلت للشيخ أسامة ما الخطة الآن؟ ما الحدث؟ فقال أنا حقيقة يعني متوجه بجميع الشباب الذين كانوا ينتمون أنذاك إلى تنظيم القاعدة متجه إلى السودان. وها نحن نقاتل منذ أكثر من سبع سنوات في الجهاد الأفغاني ومع الأسف بعد سقوط كابل بدل أن نحقق أهدافنا بدأت فصائل المجاهدين تتقاتل فيما بينها وهذه فتن فيها إراقة دماء مسلمين لا يمكن لنا أن نشارك بها Bin Laden's one and only press conference was in May 1998. He appeared with Ayman al-Zawahiri on his right and al-Qaeda's military commander Mohammed Atef on his left. Before a select few journalists, he announced what he called the International Islamic Front for Jihad Against Jews and Crusaders. The press conference represented a categoric statement of intent. The front would take the war to America. Pakistani journalist Mazha Ali Khan was one of the few journalists present at the conference. The journalists were under strict instructions. No independent videotaping was allowed. Khan only managed to take photographs. पहले तो जब वो आए वहाँ पे मतलब तो तोपों की उन्हें किस तोपों की सलामी दी गई हम लोग हॉल में बैठे हुए थे तो जाहिर है जब तो फायर होता है तो बंदा वैसे ही हिल जाता है और वहाँ तो पहाड़ी इलाका था उसकी गूंजी बहुत थी तो हम लोग सब मतलब पीछे मुड़ के देखा कि क्या हुआ ना तो पूछा हमने ये क्या कहने के जी उसामा बिन लादेन आ गए हैं तो उनको सलामी दी जा रही है कि ये किस चीज़ की सलामी दी है कि जी इक्कीस तोपे जो हैं वो चलाई गई हैं किस तोपों की सलामी दी गई है तो वो इंटरव्यू हुए उनके साथ आतिफ थे उनके पुराने साथी जो पहले हम जब इंटरव्यू के लिए गए थे जब भी वो साथ थे तो दूसरे साथी उनके वो थे जहरी वो थे आए वो उनके साथ चार बॉडी गार्ड थे जिन्होंने नकाब लिए हुए थे मीनवाइल टेंशंस वर आल्सो एस्कलेटिंग इन द रीजन On May 28, 1998, Pakistan exploded five underground nuclear devices in response to India's nuclear tests two weeks earlier. The move provoked worldwide condemnation and fears of a nuclear conflict in one of the world's most volatile regions. Aides close to Bin Laden at the time said that he sent a letter of congratulation to Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif following the nuclear tests. <laughs> Nasa al Bahri, also known as Abu Jandal, is a former bodyguard of Bin Laden. Al Jazeera's Ahmed Zaidan met him in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. Sheikh Hussain sent a letter. He sent a letter to the government of Pakistan and to the Nawaz Sharif in this period. After the Nawaz Sharif, after the Nawaz Sharif, he sent a letter to the Nawaz Sharif. He sent a letter to the Nawaz Sharif and he sent a letter to the Nawaz Sharif. وأنه لا ينبغي أن يتخذ السلاح هذا وسيلة من أجل القومية أو مثل مثل أجل عدو التقليد اللي هو الهند وكذا ولكن لا بد أن يستخدم هذا السلاح في حماية الإسلام بدرجة الأولى حتى الشيخ سبد أرسل رسالة إلى نواز الشريف تلك الفترة وأرسلها لأعضاء الحكومة. Two months after announcing his jihad, 
bin Laden put his words into action. Al-Qaeda was behind the bombings of the US embassies in Nairobi and Dar es Salaam in August 1998. As he had promised, bin Laden was taking the global war to America. The Americans understood that Al-Qaeda could attack at any place and at any time. But some experts raised the possibility that the attacks were masterminded more by the Egyptian militants than by bin Laden himself. On 20th August, before the attack, I received a phone call from Dr. Amin al-Zawahiri, and he spoke in English, as he is very fluent in English, and he told me that uh, Osama bin Laden is sitting next to him, but since he cannot communicate in English, so he, he was sending his regards, and Dr. Zawahiri told me that uh, Mr. Bin Laden is denying his involvement and Al-Qaeda's involvement in the bombings of the U.S. embassies in Kenya and Tanzania. So he wanted me to convey this message through the media. He said things like, um, I did not know Ramzi Youssef before the World Trade Center bombing, which left open the question that they met afterwards. But he said, one thing I will say to you, you will see many Ramzi Youssefs coming to your shores. He said, I predict a black day for the United States, a day after which the United States will not be the same, and was clearly trying to tell us that. And I think if there was any doubt about that, or the gravity of that, within seven and a half weeks, we saw the simultaneous bombings of two U.S. embassies in Nairobi, Kenya, and Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, with 225 people dead. That certainly was the period on the end of the sentence bin Laden started that night. U.S. President Bill Clinton ordered an immediate retaliation. With cruise missile raids on Al-Qaeda bases in Khost and Kandahar in Afghanistan, a number of Al-Qaeda members were killed. Bin Laden himself escaped unscathed. في تلك الفترة يعني اتصل بالمرحوم أبو حفص المصري وقال لي بأن هناك رسالة من الشيخ أسامة بن لادن نريد أن نبلغها للرئيس كلينتون عبر جريدة القدس العربي قلت له تفضل قال نحن سننتقم انتقاما لم يعهده أحد سنركع أمريكا سن يعني سنلقلهم درسا لن ينسوا أبدا Just a few days before the cruise missile attacks, whether by chance or fate, bin Laden had decided not to visit the base at Khost, which would be targeted. فالكل طرحنا فكرة زيارة كابو مأزل الجبهة وشيء من روحانيات نسترجعها والرباط في سبيل رباط ساعة وكذا فما كان موضوع إنه في خبر معين لكن من باب الاحتياطات حنا متوقعين ضرب المعسكرات شيء طبيعي جدا لأنه هدف كبير والأمريكان يعني معروف طبيعتهم الرد السريع ويردوا برد أي بس همشي نحن استرجع كرامة فالشيخ وسام ما كان متوقع ضرب المعسكرات حتى لما كان مقرر العودة للمعسكرات كان معنا مقر سري خارج المعسكرات بحيث إنه قصف ما يقصف مقر الشيخ وسام يقصف المعسكرات لكن الشيخ وسام ما يصاب فكان كما يقال يعني إيش نوع من فضل الله عز وجل إلهام من الله عز وجل نحن نتجه إلى كابل فوصلنا إلى كابل بالليل استرحنا ثاني يوم بالليل سار رد وبقصة المعسكرات 